Several weeks after the BP Gulf of Mexico oil spill, researchers familiar with the Gulf revealed that their research team had detected a large plume made up of oil droplets, and it was located more than 3,000 feet under the water's surface. One of those researchers is University of Georgia marine scientist Samantha Joy. The oil plume data collected by Joy and the other researchers working with her initially received a cool reception from officials in NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and oil company officials consistently backed away from confirming the findings of the scientists. But by the end of the summer, other scientists had made similar public statements following their own research. Giant plumes of oil did exist in the Gulf. So my concern regarding the, the deep water impacts is, is really the ultimate fate of the material that's in these plumes. Joy has been conducting research in the Gulf of Mexico for more than 15 years. In late May, she and her colleagues from several universities embarked on a long-planned research cruise in the Gulf. They made another excursion in August. This video was taken aboard the research vessel F.G. Walton Smith, owned by the University of Miami. My two biggest concerns are, are one, the, the toxicity effect of the polyaromatic hydrocarbons. That's limited really to a small area around the, the spill zone, say five kilometers around the spill zone. That's where the, the, the most toxic types of hydrocarbons, which are these polyaromatic, the naphthalene, uh, benzene, not, no, not benzene, but naphthalene and, and toluene and things like that. The other concern that I have is, is just the sheer volume of gas that's been expelled from this wellhead. Most of that gas is dissolved in the deep water um, and it represents a large potential oxygen sink and, and how that is going to play out over time. At 3,600 feet below the surface, tiny, virtually invisible droplets of oil formed a vast cloud that was three miles long. But they are out of sight. And while cleanup appeared to focus on surface oil and oil reaching beaches and marshes, Joy says the plumes and the oil that gets dispersed in the depths of the Gulf are no less of a threat to marine life. Dispersed oil and dissolved oil is, is no less of a threat than surficial oil floating on the surface because that material still carries with it two potentially important biological effects. One is toxicity. Um, and that's related um, to the concentration of, of oil in the environment. The other is oxygen demand, and that's related to the stimulation of biodegradation and oxygen consumption from, from the oil in the environment. While there has been much talk about organisms breaking up the oil in the water, Joy says that's not all good news. Well, microbial consumption of oil and gas is obviously a very good thing. Um, and if it were happening in the surface mix layer, it would be a wonderful, wonderful thing with hardly any side effects. Um, but it's not happening in the surf mix, mix layer. It, it's happening deep below the surface in isolated layers. And because it's happening in these isolated layers, oxygen becomes a big problem because if these organisms in these deep layers consume oxygen faster than physical processes can replenish oxygen in these layers, you can have the generation of, of layers of, of low oxygen water. That, she says, could lead to suffocation of animals living on the sea floor. It's a good thing, but it's, it's, it's a complicated thing because you've got this, this consumption of oxygen that exceeds the, the ability of the system to replenish the oxygen. And Joy is concerned that little attention has been given to the other byproduct of the deep water well. The other aspect that there hasn't been much discussion about, and I'll go back to this again and again, is, is the gases. You know, Forty percent of the flux from this well was gas. Methane gas, ethane gas, propane gas. Nobody's talking about the role of gases. Nobody's talking, the gases weren't included in the oil budget. NOAA doesn't measure gases on the cruises, the monitoring cruises. It, it's like 40 percent of this spill is, is being sort of shoved in the corner and a rug thrown over it. She says that the effects of the oil, gas, and dispersants will affect marine life for years to come. She also offers a final thought. And we need to all take a look at ourselves and, and change our own individual ways as much as we can to, to have a smaller impact on the world because un, until the global appetite for oil and gas is decreased, oil, and, oil producing companies are going to 
continue to, to drill in deep water in the Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of Nigeria, in the Indian Ocean, you name it. You know, this isn't going to stop until the consumption stops. And that starts with each of us. Um, it doesn't start with anybody else. It starts with an individual person. It starts with me and it starts with you.